celebrate the faithfulness of God. Thank him for those testimonies that we have heard this morning. They are the doings of the Lord and they are marvelous in our eyes. Let's give him the praise. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor and all the adoration. Make sure your voice of thanksgiving is heard on high as you give glory unto God this morning. Give glory unto his name. Give praise unto his name. Give him all the praise. Let your voice of thanksgiving be heard. Don't mutter your words. Give glory unto God. Give glory unto God. These testimonies are his doings and they are marvelous in our eyes. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Bless his name. Father, we say thank you. We glorify your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise. Now thank him for the answers he has given to your prayers that you have not prayed into storage, but that God has heard you. Give him the glory due unto his name. Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all honor. You are worthy of all adoration. Blessed be your holy name. Now ask him to speak to you this morning. Lord, I've come to hear from you. All the people gathered early in the morning for to hear him. It's your voice I've come to hear today. Speak directly to me by your word today. Speak directly to me by your word today. Speak directly to me by your word today in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for the privilege and the blessing of being in your presence again this morning. We thank you for the answers you have given to our prayers and for the awesome testimonies of your mighty acts in our midst. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. And this morning, Lord, our eyes are upon you. We are asking that you will speak to us. By your word, let every one of us be transformed. We give you the praise and glory for it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please be seated in his presence. It's my year of breaking limits. According to scriptures, the hand of God is a non-negotiable requirement in seeing his plan and purpose delivered on the earth. In 1 Kings chapter 8, we're familiar with this scripture in verse 15. He said, that which you speak to my father David, he said, with your own hand, he has fulfilled it. So God utilizes his hand to bring to pass his plan. Don't forget that the nature of God is that whatever he ordains to occur, he proclaims. He will declare it. He will speak it forth. Isaiah chapter 49, 42 and verse 9. He said, the former things are come to pass, new things do I declare. He said, before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. So God is in the habit of proclaiming or declaring his purpose and his plan. Whatever he speaks with his mouth, it will take his hand to deliver. In Psalm chapter 127 and verse 1 and 2, verse 1 in particular, he said, except the Lord build the house, the laborers are laboring in vain. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman is awake, but his being awake is in vain. In other words, until the input of God is included in any engagement, the output cannot produce the purpose of God. God's purpose will always require God's hand for it to be delivered. And when it comes particularly to the building of his church, only he has the ability to build the church. Matthew 16, 18, he said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. So it is the input of God that produces impact in any pursuit of divine purpose. It is the input of God that produces impact in the pursuit of any divine purpose. However, it's important for us to understand, particularly as it concerns the ongoing wonder double church growth, which God has ordained for this year, that is only deliverable by faith. Our faith is what activates God's hand to operate on our behalf. Isaiah 53 and verse 1. Who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? 
So the faith question must be answered if the hand of God is going to be included. It takes faith to see the hand of God provoked to deliver any purpose of God's heart. Remember what the scripture says concerning the church in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6. It said Paul planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So increase is by the hand of God. Increase is by the hand of God. Multiplication is by the hand of God. Actualization of the purpose of God will always demand God's hand. And that's why for the course of this week, we are going to be looking at this exhortation line. It has happened before and it will happen again. It has happened before and it will happen again. It has happened before and it will happen again. Psalm 28 and verse 5, the Bible says, Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hand, he shall destroy them and not build them up. God forbid. What God is saying from his word is simple. If you are going to be built up, if you are going to see the plan of God actualized, then we must regard what he has done before, recognizing that whatever he has done before, he has the ability to do it again. And that's what we're going to see in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're looking through the scriptures to see examples of what God did before in order to position our faith for him to do it again. Now, in scriptures, we have this picture painted to us. Uh, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt was depicted as the birth of the church in the wilderness. And according to scripture, we see a three million member church called the church in the wilderness, that was born in one day. In the book of Exodus chapter 12 and verse 42, Exodus 12 and verse 42, the Bible makes us to understand there, it said it's a night to be much remembered or to be much observed in bringing them out of the land of Egypt. That is the night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. Just one night. Within one night, the church in the wilderness was born. The Bible calls them the church in the wilderness in Acts chapter 7 and verse 38. They came out as one body within one night. Don't forget the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 66 verse 7 and verse 8. Isaiah 66 verse 7 and verse 8. It said, before she travelled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who has seen such a thing? Who has heard such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? He said, for as soon as Zion travails, she brought forth her children. The Bible said, can the earth be made to bring forth in a day? Can you plant a mango seed and harvest mango the same day? Naturally speaking, no. He said, can a nation be born at once? Naturally speaking, no. But as soon as Zion travailed, she did not wait. She brought forth. On, at the instance of the travail, there was a bringing forth of a nation. God is saying, therefore, that when it comes to the delivery of his purpose, he has done it before. He brought forth a nation in one day. It was called the church in the wilderness. In one day, that nation was born. That church was born. Three million strong within a moment. If he did it before, then doing it again is not a problem. The Bible makes it very clear to you and to me that we must regard the operation of his hand if we are going to see his acts in our midst again. What God is saying to you, therefore, is every act of God, no matter what it is, whatever he has done, he's still able to do it again. Now, Psalm chapter 119, Psalm 119, verse 111. Psalm 119, verse 111. The Bible tells us, he said, thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever. Whatever God has done before is our heritage to be done again. He said, Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage, and the heritage lasts forever. So if we could see God do that in the book of Exodus as a testimony of his acts in the past, it is our heritage forever. It means it can be done again. It can be done what? It can be done again. It can be done again. If he if it, if it did it in one night, they had been waiting for 400 years. And the Bible says in the self same day, every one of them came out 
of the land of Egypt. There was the birth of the church in the wilderness. At the end of that season, they stood with God and in one day, he brought his word to pass. I'd like us to know, therefore, what God has said concerning this year, particularly as it concerns the church and the multiplication thereof, his hand is going to bring it to pass. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. Eph Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. He said, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that is at work in you. So according to scripture, therefore, we have the responsibility of ensuring that we engage our faith because faith is a covenant requirement for the reenactment of any act of God. Faith is a covenant requirement for the reenactment of any act of God. If you have seen what God did in the past, what is required of you in the present is faith. What is required of you in the present is what? Is faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 6 and verse 12, it said, Be not slothful, but be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So every provision of God, you take delivery of them by faith. In Galatians 3.14, Galatians 3.14, it said that but we may receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So the faith question must be settled when it comes to taking delivery of any provision of God. Whatever God has said with his mouth will require faith in our heart to see it delivered. In Mark chapter 9 verse 23, the Bible says all things are possible to him that believeth. So our faith makes all things possible. It brings us to a world of supernatural possibilities. That's what faith does. It brings us to a world of supernatural possibilities. It eliminates impossibility. Where faith is present, impossibilities are dissolved. It brings about the hand of God which provokes impossible things to be brought to pass. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. So the covenant requirement that God demands of you and me is our faith. That's what it requires. In Hebrews 11 verse 6, it said without faith it is impossible to please or to move God. God will not act without faith. Your faith is what engages the hand of God to act on your behalf so all we require in this season is to engage with faith engage with faith in fact please hear this whatever is not of faith is sin romans 14 23 so it means that if you are going to engage profitably productively fruitfully then faith is a must we must engage our faith as we dive in to what is left of this season of operation but what God is simply saying is this. His ability is not questionable. Our faith is what we must put in line. His ability is not questionable. Our faith is what must be put in line. In one day, it can bring forth 3 million people. All that is required is our faith. In one day, it can bring forth 3 million people. And all that is required is our faith. We have seen it to a certain degree as a commission. We saw how that over 107,000 people were required to meet the target of the second wonder double on the last week. And God overshot it in one day. So he has done it before. He will do it again. This time he will do it in a greater fashion than we have ever experienced before. We shall see an invasion, the order that cannot be naturally imagined. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said somebody believe it, say loud, amen. All that God requires is your faith and my faith. As we connect in faith, we shall see the hand of God deliver in unusual fashion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. The beauty of every engagement with God is that he never leaves you the same. You can't work for God and God not work on your behalf. You can't work for God and God not work on your behalf. And when God works on the behalf of an individual, what he begins to manifest is signs and wonders. They went everywhere preaching, God walking. They went everywhere preaching, God walking. They went everywhere preaching, God walking. They were on assignment for God. God was taking, you know, manifesting in every area of their own lives. That will be your testimony from now. 
In this prophetic season, God will manifest in every department of your life. Your marital life, your career life, your business life, your spiritual life, your mental acumen. It will touch every area of your life. And you will emerge from this prophetic season as a living testimony. Rise on your feet with me. Lift your hand. Lift your voice. Lord, I receive grace for fruitful engagement. For fruitful engagement. For faith-filled engagement. On the altar of prayer in the harvest field. I receive grace, O oh Lord. For faith-filled engagement. For faith-filled engagement. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I receive grace. Lord, I receive grace. Lord, I receive grace. For faith-filled engagement. For faith-filled engagement. Speak right now. Make your decree and declaration. And take grace from God right now. Take grace from God right now. This week provides another opportunity to serve God effectively, to serve God productively, to serve God fruitfully. Lord, I receive grace for it. Lord, I receive grace for it. Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace to serve you, O oh Lord, fruitfully, productively, to serve you, Lord, in such a way, Lord, that will produce unusual results to serve you with, with faith in all that I do. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift your hand, lift your voice, and give glory to God. Father, we say thank you, and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. As you have asked of the Lord this morning, his grace will be made manifest on your behalf. In Jesus' precious name. Every single day gives you and I another opportunity. It's a countdown towards the conclusion of this race. At the 11th hour, some showed up and they were still decorating. I want you to know that for you, it's not too late. God will still decorate you in this season. It will make you out to be a living testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. So take advantage of every opportunity. Remember, we have the morning and evening prayer read, 8 to 10 and 5 to 6. Take advantage of it. You're on your way to work minister to somebody about christ advertise jesus everywhere you go your break time or your way from work just get busy for jesus and watch what he makes out of you welcome you now to a season of supernatural visitation god will surely visit you in the name of jesus speak to the day make your decree concerning the day make your decree concerning the day whatever you declare god will deliver Make your decree concerning the day right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. As you have declared, so shall it be. This day is declared blessed, a day of testimonies. No evil comes your way all through the day. It shall be good news all the way. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. It's my year of breaking limits.